After this six minute video, you will know how to use the advanced expression links to randomize, cycle, and animate between colors without coding. Oh, and there's a bonus chapter again. Okay, so let's say you're making one of these data streams. Uh, the last thing that you want to do is going to every single square you see here and set keyframes to make the color change. That would be a ton of work. Now, Ray Dynamic Emma Color comes with a couple tools that can help you out to randomize and cycle your colors. Now, this may look very complex, but it's actually made up of individual compositions that just have a couple of squares in it, like this one. And then there's just a couple of variations of that, and then they're mixed together in this giant stream, and it will look bigger than it really is. Now let's assign a random color to these squares from this color palette. So we've been using the color link by default, but if I change that to the random link, and I start to color these squares, and I color them with white, you'll see that every square will grab a random color from this color palette. Now the number in this case represents the random seed. So if I don't like this arrangement, I can just keep clicking on a different number until I get something that I like. In this case, five looks pretty good. Now, this is my main color palette. And sometimes I just want the random colors to be a specific range of colors instead of the entire color palette. Well, let's get back to color and color all these objects white. And then I'm just gonna color these squares uh, with the colors that I want to be in my random. So say I wanna have red in there, blue, yellow, pink, and purple. So after that's done, I'm gonna select the random link instead of the color link, and I'm gonna select all of my layers, and I'm going to create a color palette from that. So now Red Enema Color is going to create a color palette from these colors, and then after that, it's going to apply the random expression, so it'll pick a random color from this color palette. And then again, if I pick a different number, I can change the random seed of this arrangement. Now, if there's colors in here that I don't like, I can remove them. And that goes in the same way that you remove an expression. So if there's an expression on this uh, property right here and I want to remove it, I can hold Option Shift and then click on the stopwatch and it will remove the expression. Now, the same goes for Ray Dynamic Color. If you want to get rid of this white color, for example, you can just hold Option Shift and then click on it and that will actually remove the color control from the palette so that it doesn't show up anymore. I can of course also add colors to this random selection by just duplicating one and then selecting white again. And then when I refresh, the white color is back. Now if I want white to have a bigger presence in this color palette, I could go to the color palette and duplicate it a couple times. And then it will be more likely that the white color will show up. Right now let's take a look at cycle. Let's get rid of these two colors and change this from random to cycle. Okay, so let's select all these layers and color them red. The cycle expression actually works this way. If I put down a layer marker with control eight, you can see that now the color jumps to the next color as soon as it hits that marker. So if I open up this layer, you can see that every time it hits the marker, I'm going to get the next color in the color palette. Now this can create some cool effects because if I color all these layers with an offset and then as soon as they hit the marker, they start to cycle through the color palette. Now if I want to continue the color to cycle, it would be a lot of work to put down all these individual markers and also put them exactly at the same time distance. I'm going to open up this color property so you can see what happens. And then instead of putting down a marker every couple frames, I'm going to just take one marker and change the duration of this marker. So I'm going to set it to 12 frames. So now every 12 frames from this moment, the color will change to the next color. And if I want to make that stop, I can just put another marker down and then it will stop the cycle. And then after that, I can make another marker and change the duration for like, say, three frames. And now every three frames, the color will change until I put another marker down. Now there's one more expression that's a blend between random and cycle, and that's random cycle. And if I select this property and I color with that, you can see that now instead of going from blue to the next color yellow, it will just go to a random color. And if I don't like the arrangement, I can always change the random seed by selecting a different number. 
All right, so there's one more expression link that I want to show you and that's animate. But first, let's go back to colors and give this property a normal color. Let's color it red. So keyframes are also supported. You can just keyframe your color and then pick a different color later in time. But you can see that Radenum Color only does hold keyframes, so it makes the color instantly switch to the next one. If you want to animate between two keyframes, you have to use the Animate Expression link. So let's click on this property and link it to this condition. Great, so now three colors were linked, and those are the three keyframes. And now you can see that it goes from red, transitions into yellow, and then transitions into purple. Now the reason why this is not supported by default is because this expression is really heavy on your system and it could potentially slow your project down. Okay, now we're going to take a look at how to recreate this data stream. And the way I offset the colors here, um, these squares are actually all colored with the random link. And then I actually use another expression to offset the position of this square. So we're going to recreate that and we're going to start with the comp that we were just in and duplicate that. So let's get rid of all the layers except the first one. And then let's get rid of these markers. And then I'm going to color this with a random color. Now the first thing that we need to do is make sure that the anchor point of the object is in the top left corner. And a quick way to do that is by going into the rectangle and putting an expression on the position property. So I'm going to hold option and click it, and then I'm going to pick with the size. And then I'm going to divide the size by two, and then hit enter. And now you can see that the square itself jumps to the anchor point. And this way, the anchor point of the square stays in the top left as soon as I change the size of the object. So let's zero out the position for this object so that it stays in the top corner. Now the next thing I want to do is make sure that the second square, the second layer, automatically goes to the position next to this square instead of right above it. And I can use the index of the layer to offset the position for the square. So the first thing I need to know is the width of this square. So I'm going to say uh, my width. And then I'm going to reference the width of this object. And then I'm going to say my position is index minus one so that it starts at zero instead of one times my width. Great. And when I hit enter and then duplicate this, you could see that every square goes to the next position based on the layer. So if I want to have the white square on the second position, I could just rearrange them. So now I need to make a slider that's going to take this square and offset it to the right. So let's create a null layer and drag it to the bottom so that it doesn't interfere with the position. Call that speed. And let's put a slider on that, also called speed. And then go back to the position and import that slider into my expression. Now you want to be careful because the name speed can't be used in expression language because it's already a function. So we need to say my speed is, and then we're going to lock this effects panel so that we can always see the slider. And then we pick whip to that. All right, let's make a calculation and add the my speed to my position. So my position plus my speed. Now, instead of adding one pixel when I change this to one, I actually want to add one block, which is 50 pixels wide. So what I can do is to speed, instead of adding one, I can do speed times its own width so that every time that the slider is one, it is actually 50 and it will offset the block by 50 pixels. So let's test this out. So now if I duplicate this a bunch of times and then offset the slider, you can see that the blocks offset as soon as I increase this number, which is exactly what we want. Now we have one problem and that's uh, when these squares reach the end of the composition, they kind of just continue and we want them to return to the start. So we have to set a limit. So let's make a new variable called limit and let's make that this comp.width. So as soon as the position of this square 
reaches 500, we want that position value to become zero again. And we're gonna use the modulo operator for that. And let's make this a variable first. Let's call it X. So we say X, which represents the position. And then we limit that by 500 by typing limit. And now every time X is 500, it will go back to zero. So now you can see that if I increase this slider, as soon as this block hits the end of the composition, it just goes back to the start. Cool, so let's duplicate some of our other squares. So and now you can just increase this slider and it will animate these little blocks to the right or to the left. Now to automate this, you can add another expression to this property, maybe like a, a time expression. But one thing you notice that, and you probably get the same effect if you keyframe it, is that instead of jumping to the right, it kind of just slowly moves to the right. And that's because uh, we're dealing with values between 0 and 1. And we just want to work with rounded values. So we need to round this uh, piece of code. So we can use math.round. And then once we do that, this will always be a whole number. And when we play that, every one second, the square will go to the right. And if I want to increase that, I just have to multiply this by four. And now the square jumps to the right four times per second. Another cool thing that we can do from here, and I encourage you to be creative with this, is tweak the shape of this square. So because this is a shape layer, we could potentially make it a circle around. If I type in roundness, uh, turn it into a circle. And then when I duplicate it, it will just be a row of circles. I can also change the size of these and then that will give us this effect. And I can even animate the size change and that's how you get these kind of random smaller dots in here. And that just makes it look a little bit more organic. I hope you learned something new. If you wanna stay up to date on the latest tutorials, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you have a request for a tutorial, find the link in the description and fill out the form. I would love to hear from you.